it's really a remarkable event which actually demonstrates our green agenda and also demonstrates that Azerbaijan is attractive not only for those who invest in fossil fuels but also for those who invest in renewables. Azerbaijan and the UAE announced a joint plan to build three major solar and wind projects in Azerbaijan with a capacity of one gigawatts at the Baku Energy Forum, which opened Baku Energy Week. It really demonstrates how a country which generated wealth from fossil fuel now is channeling this wealth into the renewable energy. And as a host country of COP29, this is also our obligation to be among the front runners on green transition. The announcement came as momentum builds for COP29 in Baku, with Azerbaijan taking over the mantle from the UAE. We set very clear and ambitious targets for tripling renewable energy capacity by 2030. We united the world around a practical pathway to keep 1.5 within reach. Around 300 companies from 37 countries came together for one of the most important events on the global energy sector calendar. The forum ran alongside two exhibitions, sponsored by Caspian Power and Caspian Oil and Gas. The Caspian Oil and Gas exhibition focuses on major oil and gas projects here in the region as well as energy security. Other topics covered include development, production, transportation as well as innovative technologies. As well as calls for switching to cleaner energy solutions and advancements in AI, there was an emphasis on ensuring economic growth in developing countries and energy transition for the future of humanity. What we really want to know is, what does modern energy access look like for everybody? Then what sort of energy system do we need to deliver that? So what we would say is, world energy systems are no longer fit for purpose. We need to be progressive and pragmatic. But we're not going to make it unless we engage more people and diverse communities in understanding their roles and choices. And that's what we mean by humanizing energy. Today we need to recognise that the energy system isn't working for everybody. There is a huge number of people who don't have access to electricity. 750 million people don't have access to electricity. And 2.2 billion people don't have access to clean cooking. This is very damaging for their health. Also seeing in advanced economies, many of the poorest people in society can't afford as much energy as they would like, or they spend a huge amount on energy. And so when we think about energy transitions, we need to think how to make sure that they are as fair as possible. And this is where governments have a key role to play. This is where they have to make sure that we keep energy sources affordable, even as we move towards cleaner sources and we move away, we transition away from fossil fuels. Geopolitics and the war in Ukraine led to a reduction in gas exports to Europe and an increase in natural gas prices. This in turn had a large impact on energy consumers, with countries looking for alternative sources and suppliers. For us, being a member of the European Union, uh, diversification gained a completely new meaning after the war broke out in, in Ukraine. So Azerbaijan being the one of the key suppliers that can enable us uh, a, a, an alternative route, an alternative uh, gas source for our secure supply is, of course, of key importance. And we have to build upon the relationship that was already established and we have to broaden it and deepen it. And the future of that energy security is paramount as the world looks to sustainable energy solutions moving forwards. Europe has a number of, of options here. It's got great offshore wind potential, it's got great solar potential. And we're seeing that policymakers are moving in that direction, pushing their, their objectives to make sure that the climate issue can be solved alongside making sure that energy is secure and affordable. We have built our narrative on three main areas. First of all is the infrastructure. So we need to build the infrastructure that is fitting with the new energy system more decentralized. Second, we need a legal environment, a market that is designed for renewables and not for the fossil fuels. And third, we have to increase our capabilities at governmental level as the skill for the workers and uh, uh, all people engaged in this decision. There was a common agreement that a sustainable future for the energy sector is only possible with a more unified global effort.